Hello everybody and welcome to my video blog of the 1987 season of WWF Superstars of Wrestling. Now this is the fourth video blog in the series and today I'm going to be talking about episodes that took place on March 7th, March 20th, or March 14th, and March 21st of 1987. So basically we are getting really, really close to WrestleMania 3, which undoubtedly ended up being the biggest show ever. So that being said, let's get right to it. Let's start off with the March 17th episode, which was taped in New Haven, Connecticut, in the Civic Center. The opening match was the Junkyard Dog going up against the Duke of Dorchester, Pete Doherty, but JYD got the win there. Then we get a special update where they have Jake the Snake Roberts and Alice Cooper sitting next with each other, interviewing about the match at WrestleMania 3 against the Honky Tonk Man. Then we see Demolition Axe and Smash as they face the team of Mike Luca and Tommy Sharp. Now, this was a short match. Demolition got the win. Then we see Ricky the Dragon Steamboat going one-on-one -on -one against Terry Gibbs, and Steamboat obviously got the win. Then we have a tag match where Nikolai Volkov and the Iron Sheik take on S.D. Jones and Brad Reagans. Now, during this match, we get a short video promo from Hacksaw Jim Duggan before the match, saying he's on his way to the WWF. But let's get back to the match. This is, uh, actually, this is somewhat of a, you know, a, competi a competitive match, but Iron Sheik and Volkov got the win. Then we go to Piper's Pit, where this week Roddy Roddy Piper's guests are Bobby Heenan and Andre the Giant. Now, Bobby Heenan has stated that Andre will not speak. Bobby will do all the speaking. But while in the middle of this Piper's Pit, out of the blue, here comes Captain Lou Albano. That's right, Captain Lou Albano comes out. And he talks to Andre, and he's saying, you know, I was your manager. You know, why are you with this? So, you know, he's trying to reason with Andre. And at the end, he says, no, I hope at WrestleMania 3 that Hulk Hogan beats your butt. So after he says that, Andre chases Captain Lou away, and that's the end of that thing. But it was just so weird to see Captain Lou just out of the blue in that one. So then after the WrestleMania 3 report, you know, where all the matches are announced and all the celebrities are, we go to our final match of the episode, where the Hart Foundation, Bret Hart, and Jim Nyhart take on the team of Jerry Allen and Jim Powers. Now, if you are fortunate, like I am, to have the video cassette known as the Hart Foundation, this match is on the tape. Bret Hart and Jim Nyhart easily win. After the match, Danny Davis goes after both men, first throws Allen out, and then actually attacks Jim Powers and throws him out of the ring, and Bret and Jim hoist Danny Davis up in the air, celebrating, and that's the end of the first episode. So the second one, once again in New Haven, Connecticut, starts off, and this one actually, to be perfectly honest, is a much more competitive episode. And I'll tell you why once I get through this. Opening match is the Killer Bees, B. Brian Blair, and Jumpin' Jim Brunzel taking on the team of Tiger Chung Lee and Iron Mike Sharp. And you know what? This is not your jobber match. This is an actual tag match where the teams are competing. And at one time, Tiger Chung Lee and Mike Sharp had the advantage, but, you know, Blair and Brunzel ended up um, picking up the victory. <clears throat> Pardon me. So after that, we go to an update report where Mean Gene is obviously looking at the new edition of the WWF magazine where Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant are on the cover. And they go to the tail of the tape. I talk about both men's height, both men's weight, the size of their chest, arms, biceps, you know it. So after that, we go to a match where the king, Harley Race, goes up against Don Driggers. Now, this is a very odd match, and I'll tell you why. During the match, they cut to the back, where the junkyard dog is watching this match. You know, 
and he's watching, and you know he's giving his own commentary. And during the middle of the match, he just gives up and leaves. He doesn't want, he doesn't finish watching the match. He's like, man, Arlie, I'll see you at WrestleMania three. He does not stay to see the end of the match. Come on, I mean, you're gonna wrestle this guy at WrestleMania three. You would, you know, you would at least think the guy would stay to watch. But anyway, Harley Race gets the win, Cradle Suplex. So then our next match is Coco Beware. He goes up against Barry O. And for those of you who don't know who Barry O is, he is the uncle of Randy Orton. Um, this is a little bit of a competitive match. Not as much as the tag match from earlier. Um, Coco Beware wins with the Brain Buster, which is eventually ending up known as the Ghostbuster, so Coco Beware gets a win. Then we see Hercules going up against Mario Mancini, and this is in a very long match, Hercules gets the win. Then we go to another Piper's Pit, where this time the guest is the champ, Hulk Hogan. And basically, Piper and Hogan are pumping each other up for you know, WrestleMania 3, Piper going against Adonis and Hogan going up against Andre. So they pump themselves up. So then we get to the WrestleMania report. And one of the things that's absolutely hilarious is they have a segment where Mary Hart is with Bobby Heenan and Andre the Giant. So Mary Hart's talking with Bobby Heenan, you know, meh, 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 meh. And then she asks Andre something. And Andre just gives the greatest reply ever. He just stares at her and goes, You talk too much. <laughs> it was just absolutely fantastic. It was great. <laughs> so then the final match of the show, Randy Savage going up against C.V. Afi. And C.V. Afi, at the beginning of this match, is actually on the offense. I mean... You know, Savage does the headbutt thing on the turnbuckle. It doesn't work. C.V. Afi gets some offense in, but, you know, of course, Savage is going to beat you in the end with the flying elbow drop and pin C.V. Afi. So now our final episode, and we're in a new building this time. We're in Dayton, Ohio at the Hera Arena. Now, what, now if you've joined me, and this is the first time you've seen this, they do not tell you what arena they're in. So, you know, you don't know that they're in New Haven or in Dayton, Ohio. So, you know, you just don't know where they are unless you were there for the taping. So the first match is basically the featured match. Hacksaw Jim Duggan makes his debut on Superstars against the Iron Sheik. Now, Iron Sheik is already in the ring and Volkov is about to sing the Russian National Anthem. When they go to the back, Craig the George is with Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and Duggan is talking. And he said that as long as he's got blood running in his veins and he's breathing, the Russian national anthem will never be sung as long as he's in the WWF. Well, as soon as he says it, Hacksaw sing, or, uh, Nikolai Volkov sings the Russian national anthem, and, you know, Hacksaw gets upset, and he starts, you know, doing his little march. He grabs his 2 by 4 he comes, you know, marching down to the ring, and he goes after Sheik, Volkov, and Slick, you know, and he swings the two by four, tries to get them all, but obviously he missed. And we don't get a match. But this is one of the rare times where, in that situation, it's actually a good thing. Because, you know, it sets up what's going to happen in the, near, in the near future between the two. And Duggan says to the crowd, "One, you know, as long as I'm here, Volkov will never sing the Russian anthem, national anthem again. So after that, we go to update again with Gene Oakland, and he talks about a match that's going to happen between Billy Jack Haynes and the Mighty Hercules. Then we see a clip of Billy Jack Haynes in action against Harley Race. Pardon me. When Bobby Heenan interferes, and then Billy Jack has some comments. And then we go to a tag match where Don Morocco and Cowboy Bob Orton face the team of Corporal Kirshner and Mario Mancini. Boy, you know, I tell you, Mancini, or uh, Kirshner, think about it. At that point, a year ago, 1986, was, one of the, was in one of the matches of WrestleMania 2. Now he's a jobber. 
in a tag match. Now, what's weird about this match is during the match, Leaping Lanny Poffo, the poet laureate of the World Wrestling Federation, reads a poem during the match. During the match. But, you know, it's sort of like a side note because, you know, Orton and Morocco are going to win. And we go to our next match where Adrian Adonis faces off against Jim Young. Basically, this is a squash match. Adonis wins with the sleeper, or as he called it, Good Night Irene. And then we go to a six-man tag. Tito Santana and the British Bulldogs going up against the team of Steve Lombardi, Al Navarro, and Rick Renslow. Um, and, you know, this is just basically a one-sided six-man tag. Even though the other team did get maybe like three, four seconds of offense in, the Bulldogs and Santana win. Then we go to Piper's Pit, where this time the guest is WWF President Jack Tunney. And he has with him the belt that Bobby Heenan requested to be made when Andre the Giant wins the belt of WrestleMania 3 so it could fit Andre. So he shows everybody the belt. It's basically the same belt Hogan has, except it's larger. And here comes Andre and Bobby Heenan. You know, they come test it out. They try to put the belt on Andre, and Andre says, It does not fit me. You know, and then Piper ends the segment with a very good, you know, sentence. It was like, you have the belt, you have the manager, you have the match. The only thing you do not have is the win. And I thought it was a very good sentence there. So then we go to our WrestleMania 3 report and... You know, go through the rundown of the card and the stars. But Mean Gene shows some of the highlights from a battle royal on Saturday night's main event the week before. Where Hogan and Andre are in it. Now this is the first time that both Hogan and Andre are in the ring since Andre challenged Hulk for the belt of WrestleMania 3. Um, you know, they show the beginning of the match. They show Hogan not or Andre not allowing Hogan to get in. Um, then they show Andre eliminating Hogan from the Battle Royal, and then after that, they show the remaining men in the match eliminating Andre the Giant from the Battle Royal, and then, you know, they have Andre, you know, being interviewed after the match. Um, that Battle Royal is actually on the Best of Saturday Night Main Event DVD that uh, WWE put out couple years ago it is really a good battle royal and if you have not seen it i definitely recommend you guys watch that match so then we go to the final match the honky tonk man against leaping lanny poffo okay so we get poffo doing poetry during one match and then he wrestles and we get no poetry from that so anyway honky tonk man wins it's a short match and then after that, he tries to sing his song. And in the middle of it, the song completely stops. And Honky, you know, is asking, who turned it off? Please turn it back on. And then Jake the Snake, you know, is saying, Honky, Damien and I are watching you. You know, because he's over the house, you know, Mike. Nobody sees him. And they just leave. And, you know, that's the end of that episode of Superstars. So at this point, after watching these three episodes, we're a week away from WrestleMania 3. So basically, we're getting hyped up for what would end up being the biggest wrestling event of all time, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, very good job, I thought, in, you know, hyping up some of the matches, especially with Lou Albano on Piper's Pit. I mean, my God, I would have never guessed they would do such a thing with that. And, um... But they really are doing a very good job hyping up, at this point in time, the the show in general. Because it really did look like a good, you know, setup. So, on the next, the next time I do this video blog, which I'm not really sure when it's going to be. Because, um, you know, like I said, I do this whenever I have a chance, so... The next time I am on, 
you will have me reviewing the show before WrestleMania and the two shows after WrestleMania. So, so basically, you're gonna have me, you know, you know, watch the show the day before WrestleMania, um, and the two after WrestleMania three. So, you know, I can't really wait to see what happens here. So those episodes would be March 28th, April the 4th, and April the 11th is when those episodes would be. Now, I do want to say real quick um, before I before I stop this video, um, and I do apologize for never giving this site any credit because sometimes my mind doesn't really work. Um, I want to thank the history of WWE.com because they've got all the results you know, from superstars of wrestling, and, you know, and while I do what I feel is a very good job of reminding or talking about everything that happens, this website is a fantastic website for just the entire history of the WWE. They also have WCW, they also have ECW, they've got old, you know, advertisement clippings of, um, of events that were happening 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, the 2000s, and today. It's a very good site. That's the history of WWE.com. You want to go to that site. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying this uh, series of the video blog of Superstars of Wrestling 1987. And I'll see you guys again next time.